Hello? From the back of a back lot of a movie studio in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> you know. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's an every kind of radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866-BRADY on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brady. How you doing, Tom? Great. All right, uh, I've got a question for you regarding the um, girl that was involved with the scandal, Ashley Alexandra Dupree. Yeah. What do you think of her as a one to ten scale rating? What would you give her? Do you think she's hot, or do you think that bitch? She's is about good? a six, and I got to tell you, I saw her in a music video, which was not her own song. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, she was in a rap video that is uh, swirling around online today it was made a couple of years ago and she's a bit of a hunchback i got to tell yeah. you she's got a kind of sloopy shoulders and, and she's got a chunk cane yeah I, I think she looks okay um i read in one of the articles she was complaining about her you know she was kind of low on money and stuff and she wasn't sure if she could pay the rent and now this this, this scandal came out and stuff and she's getting a lot of hits with her music even though her music is you know sounds like crap well, that's what happens. Yeah, she's getting a lot of hits, but I, I give her a seven. I just want to know what you thought of her. So. Well, I, I I don't think she was uh, all that. I certainly wouldn't pay yeah. forty seven hundred dollars to no, get that's with another her. thing too. Tell for, you what, yeah, forty three or forty seven hundred dollars for her. I wouldn't. If I'm going to pay that kind of money, I'm going to be getting a ten for sure. And according to what I read, uh, it's not the first time he's had her. Really, several times. Yes. Uh, well, I don't think she's worth it at all. All right, Tom. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. I uh, listen to you pretty regularly, and you got a good show going, so I'll keep listening. Can Hi, Brady. Can you take me out, client number nine? Client number nine style, here you go. Number nine. The remorse I feel will always be with me. From those to whom much is given, much is expected. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. Now we have a caller who's been with us before. So Maureen, before you tell us the latest twist in your story, tell everybody what we talked about the first couple of times you were with us. Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great. That is wonderful. I love you. I miss you. I listen to you every single day. Even at the shelter, we had tuned in to Tom like us. Love that. Um, since I last talked to you, I was in the middle of a uh, very, very high-profile case. I won my case, and I won a substantial Well, that's not what we. That's not what we. See, I told you to tell the first part of the story first. This is. Oh, the first. We part didn't. Of the I didn't even know you were suing a, an employer. I, that you okay. didn't. You didn't talk about that. What you okay. talked about was the position you were in. And uh, people don't. We want people to remember you for what you said the first time, so they'll know who you are. Okay, my children and I were living with a man who is very verbally abusive to myself and to my two children, and we had nowhere to go, so went to a shelter. And and and, and how did you get hooked up with that shelter? Um, Tom Likas. Uh, Dino helped you, right? Dino helped me. Yeah. Dino hooked you up. Yes, he did. So so there you were. You were living in your car at one point, weren't you? Yes, with my two kids, trying to get them to school. And it was a nightmare, Tom. And you were and being physically abused. But was that a boyfriend? Yes. Right. 
And so, so, so we, uh, we, uh, d uh, you know, the show and Dean, uh, got together and, uh, um, we uh, hooked you up with with a uh, shelter for in for Macau. women who are abused, and how did that work out for you? It worked out great. I mean, they. I, I'm not a dumb person. I've been to college. I I didn't graduate college, but I had a pretty good job, and I was making good money. But it just wasn't enough to support myself and two children having a deadbeat dad. So we ended up at the shelter, and it wasn't that bad. I mean, they gave me working skills, which I already knew how to type. I could type approximately 120 words a minute. And the place where I w I'm not supposed to talk about it, but the place where I was employed, I was attacked. And You were attacked by who? I can't say. I don't mean his name. I mean your boss, uh, another yeah. a coworker. Your boss physically yeah. or attacked you or sexually? What 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 happened? Uh, all of the above. Really? Yeah. So, in addition to living with an abusive guy, you had a boss who 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 raped you. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. more intense than I even knew. Yeah, and it was going on when I talked to you the last time, but I wasn't allowed to talk about it. But the case settled, and apparently he did it to the girl before me, So, and the company paid her off, and she's out of the picture now, and she was going to testify on my behalf, but we settled out of court, so now I can afford to buy a house, Tom. Oh, my. Now, yeah. now let me ask you a question. Uh, cause we don't know what company this is. We don't know, uh, any, the name of the person. So you can talk about it, I would imagine, as long as we don't get into the specifics of the case. Is this guy still working? No, they fired him. They did he, fire him. He is now a convicted sexual predator. Don't you find it interesting that the previous person settled, but they, they didn't include the settlement that the guy be fired? Yes. I do. Because that's why you got attacked. Now, something even more interesting than that, okay, everybody has a MySpace page, and you even told me, take your kids off your MySpace page. Right. I did that. I did that. And it's just me on my MySpace page, and there's a picture of me in my bathing suit. Tom, that lost me a million dollars, because I was suing for a million eight. Well, not me, my attorney. And, and what they say, because you were in a bathing suit on your MySpace page, because, you were probably asking for it? Exactly. Right. Well, I told you about these MySpace pages and Facebook. I told you. I know. I know. So I completely deleted my MySpace, and I'm not messing around with that anymore. I'm going to take care of my kids. I have a financial advisor. I'm going to buy a home. I called a mortgage broker this morning. I mean, things are just going my way, and I owe it all to you. Very and nice. Very nice. And Dino. What do you say to all these women who say, I hate women? What do you say to them? Get out while you can. It's never, ever, ever too late. Well, it's the, never too well, late. Well, it's not only that, but, you know, a lot of people say, I hate women, Maury. Well. I mean, it, look, you called in. You needed help. We helped you. Yeah. And it, I I called you because I know your heart, Tom. You you're you're not a woman basher. You tell it how it is. Women are gold diggers. That's all they want. They want they want a man to take care of them. That's all women want. The majority of women, I should say. And now, yeah, now you I'm never I'm now, never going to have a man again. You are gonna, I think I'm turning lesbian. Now, you don't have to turn lesbian, but you are going to take care of yourself and you are going to stay away from having anybody living in your house. Most definitely. You're not going to be moving in with anybody else. No. no this no, is no, your no. second chance at life here, Maureen. You're going to buy your house. You're going to have a house, finally, with your children, not live in your car anymore, and you're going to have to stop having men living with you. That's right. And I owe it all to Tom Likas 101. Very nice. My daddy. My daddy. We are. You know what? I'm, I'm more proud of you than just about anybody who's called it. I think that's fantastic because you completely dug out of a big hole and completely turned it around.
I wouldn't have been able to if I didn't call you on the freeway that day, though. Because I was at my wit's end, if you don't, if you don't recall, I was hysterical. You were crying and you pulled down, over, I remember. Down. Yeah, and you made me pull over and you talked to me. So all the women out there, Tom's not what he perceives himself to be on the radio. He's a genuine man, a real man. Well, not like you. these, not like these little pussy men that claim they're men. Exactly right. Fantastic. I I, and and by the way, I'll tell you one other thing that's working in your favor. It just happens to be now you got that settlement. Right as the price of homes is dropping like a rock. Oh, my. You would not believe the offers that I'm getting. Mm hmm Left and right. Oh, I Left believe it. Left and right. I believe and, it. And it's so easy. Zero down. I mean, I could put a hefty down. I could pay it in cash, but I need to build up some equity. So according to my financial advisor and i'm going to do it the right way and i've never owned a home and you know my kids and i are going to have what we need good for you and you even got some good uh, advice you got to help somebody to help you on this that's great yes and i owe it all to you and dino we i think i think i cannot thank you enough well i i'm not being facetious i like to kid around a lot but I, we are very proud of you because i remember your calls you, you talked to us more than once on the air Oh, many times. And I remember when we uh, hooked you up with uh, with the shelter. Yes. And I remember that you were talking to Dean. You were calling him off the air and telling him what was happening. Yes. And uh, I am just thrilled. And and for for the morons out there who say I'm a misogynist or that I hate women, uh, uh, the real truth is I hate ball busting bitches and women who want to take your money. <laughs> but when somebody needs my help, I'm here. Oh, you're there. You are my savior. You're my God. I, I'm an atheist, but you're my God. Well, I worship you. I love that. I do. I'd ask you I, to get I on your knees, you but you might take it the wrong way. No, no. I, I would not take it the wrong way because I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, dear. We're not going to go there. But uh, nonetheless, I'm very proud of you. And I want you to keep in touch. And when you buy your house, I want you to take a picture of you and your kids in front of your new house. I will. And send it to us. And we'll put it on our website so people can see you're a real person. And that's yes. a real story. Yes. And I owe it to you and Dino. And tell Dino I love him and thank him. Absolutely, I will, Maureen. And okay. the and the ex, he is safely out of your life now? Yes, thank God. I haven't seen hide nor hair of him. Spectacular. And I don't, I don't drive by i don't do anything yeah I'm don't buy a house in his neighborhood either okay? oh gosh no <laughs> go somewhere else another area yeah, code yeah definitely okay okay all right maureen we are proud thank you so much i just called because you're the reason this happened i think you that is are the reason i think that is fantastic thank you so much Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. On occasion, I may wake up and uh, be dreaming that, hey, no one's in the house, it's empty. What would it be like just to wake up, go work out, play some tennis, play a little bit of piano, go for a bike ride, and then go out and hang out? You want to know? <laughs> Stop by my home tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. 97.1 free FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. It's the Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show on this Friday at 1 800 5800 Tom. Make today the day. You make your voice heard. Make today the day. That's right. You've been talking about doing it, you pussy. When are you going to step up to the plate? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Brian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. I just wanted to call and say thank you for saving my life a few years back. How did I do that? Well, I was dating this ball-busting bitch. She had a kid, and uh, everyone hated her. My family hated her. My friends hated her. But I was, you know, too PW to uh, realize it. And so... the they told me to uh, listen to you one day, and so I did while she was in the car with me, and 
you, you were just talking about never date single mothers and, you know, never spend money on women and all like that. And I'm like, wow, this guy's making a good point. And then you said it right there, dream killers. Women are dream killers. And this girl, like, ruined all my hobbies and all my friendships with my friends and everything. And I was like, wow, this guy's right. You're gone. Right there in the car. Wow. I'm, I'm really pleased that that happened, Brian. I'm pleased that you learned from tuning in. Oh, yeah, just one episode was all it took, and that was it. Three years of horribleness just done. And I have you to thank for that, Tom. Congratulations, not, Brian. Now, you Brian. do not need a girlfriend. You just don't. Oh, you don't. No, you really don't. You know, just live the bachelorhood, enjoy life, and get more ass in the toilet seat. <laughs> All right. So thank I just you. wanted to thank you again, Tom. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Bye. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number for wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. This is Darren. Hello, Darren. Tom, how are you? Great. Got a question for you. Yes. Why is it that our government is spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a prostitution task force to bust their own people when they could be putting that money into education or something else, like we're having to cut back on teachers. Well, first of all, they, all I, I don't know about I don't know about a prostitution task force. Uh, Elliot Spitzer was not uh, discovered by a prostitution task force. They uh, mentioned it on the news. Well, I'm telling you that there may have been a task force, but that's not who began the investigation. Elliot Spitzer was investigated because he made what a bank considered to be uh, suspicious transactions. You know, any time you wire $10,000 or more to anybody, uh, banks are supposed to report that to the federal government. If you withdraw more than $10,000 out of a bank account, uh, banks are supposed to report that to the federal government. Elliot Spitzer, apparently, once he realized that his uh, transactions would be uh, uh, reported, tried to break the transaction up into three separate smaller transactions so they would not be reported to the government. His bank, where he does business, saw this as suspicious and reported it to the federal government. The federal government, once they knew it was Elliot Spitzer, uh, the investigators believed it was possible he was being bribed or that he was being blackmailed. With Something was going on. So they started monitoring his cash transactions, all of them. And when they found out he was sending money to Emerald Club VIP, they started wiretapping. That's well, how he was investing. Legalize prostitution so they can collect some uh, taxes on. It. Well, because people like Elliot Spitzer get elected by telling people they're going to clean up prostitution. Well, don't allow them to walk the streets, but allow them to have brothels. Again, they, uh, again, you have program. to understand. The only reason vice is illegal is to give the government broad authority to go into your glove compartment. I mean, right. why? You know, it's illegal to bet a friend a hundred dollars on the Super Bowl. It's illegal. Right. It's not illegal to get onto your Ameritrade account and bet a hundred thousand dollars on, you know, on Apple Computer, but to bet a hundred dollars on who's going to win the Super Bowl, illegal. And the government enforces that stuff. But the reason they enforce it is so that the government has broad authority to pull you over, go through the trunk of your car, go through your glove compartment. And, and, and politicians like Elliot Spitzer and others, they get elected by saying, I'm going to be the new sheriff of town. I'm going to clean up. In the meantime, he's using it. Well, he, that's why he got exactly what he deserves. I don't feel the least bit sorry for him. No, he's an idiot. He got exactly what he deserves. I hope he gets hard time. He probably won't, but I wish he would. Total hypocrite. Right. All right I, I, by the way, I'm a libertarian on this. I believe prostitution should be totally legal since there are so many other legal forms of prostitution, uh, including uh, marriage. Right. Well, if they'd legalize it, the, the world would be a much happier place, or at least this country would. Well, nobody's, nobody's ever left uh, getting a little and been in a bad mood. Well, that's certainly true. But again, uh, you know, why should getting it for free be legal, but getting it uh, for a, a cost be illegal? It doesn't make any sense at all. And the reason is the same reason having a joint in your car is illegal. It's to give the government broad authority to do things that are none of their business. 
All right, Tom. And Have Elliot Elliot Spitzer, being a guy who got elected, say he was going to clean up prostitution rings. I couldn't be happier. I right. couldn't be happier. Oh my God, I'd love nothing better than to see him in shackles heading into a prison cell. Absolutely. With not because not work. because I think prostitution should be illegal, but because I think people who torture the rest of us with these laws should be punished by them. Right. Just like that, Larry. They're just like that, Larry Craig in the men's room at the airport. <laughs> I'd love to see him in prison. Yep. After all the laws he tried to make against homosexuality and homosexuals, I would love to see him go to prison for that. Well, have a great weekend, Tom. You too, Darren. Appreciate the call. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Luke on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, man? Not much. Hey, I heard your, um, actually, your podcast named uh, Catholics Offended about a company that uh, placed an ad that offended Catholics because it had a, something about a nun. I forgot the details. Yeah. Um, and, you, and you said, well, it doesn't matter if nuns get offended because they're not in the uh, target uh, demographic. So if, the, if Catholics get offended and they talk about it, they're just doing free advertising for uh for the the company that did that, so it kind of works out for them. And uh, something similar happened to me. I'm a 20 year old college student, and at my school, a strip club uh, down the street from my school put a an ad on the school newspaper saying uh, we have a specials on uh, on Sundays, and uh, if hey, girls, if you have if you want to make some extra cash, come work for us. And this is on the school newspaper. And I was in my uh, sociology class, and a student, I don't think she's in that sociology class, but she came to uh, kind of show that to the class and say, oh, this is ridiculous, we have to take the ad off the um, the school newspaper, you know, because it's offensive, because this is uh, not a, you know, it's like a bad thing or something. And I actually, I, I was arguing with her, and I said, no, this, I mean, they have the right to do this. The, the school put it, they, they accepted it, they put it on the newspaper. And you coming over here and telling us about it, this is the same issue. You're just helping them out, because now I know about a strip club that I never even paid attention to before. Look at that. Well, you're absolutely right about everything you're saying. I don't disagree with any of it. And yeah. I, I, you know, um, let's face it, where do you get girls uh, to appear in strip clubs? Uh, I once dated somebody who was a stripper. But uh, unlike many strippers who are into the lap dance business and stuff, she was studying to be a dentist. And she had uh, no scholarships and uh, no parents helping her out or anything. So uh, she worked on the pole Friday and Saturday night to pay for her tuition. Exactly. And that was it. She didn't engage in sex acts with people. She didn't go home with people. She didn't give her number out to people. She didn't do lap dances. It was all on the pole. And it was enough to help her pay her bills. Exactly. So uh, why not go to the school newspaper? And uh, I, I did they did they succeed in taking the ad out of the paper? Uh, well, the paper has been published already, and it's out. Uh, the the question is, is it going to be on the next paper? Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Are they going to prevent it from getting it again? I don't know, Tom, but uh, I'll keep you posted if if something um, crazy happens. Well, thank you for that, Luke. Thank you. Hey, can you take me out with a stuttering fart, please? A stuttering fart. Here you go. Tom Likas. Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. I'm 42, and I'd love to bang an 18-year-old. That'd be great. It's the Tom Likas Show. 97.13 FM. SoCal's FM Talk Station. Telephone to one 800 800 tom Thank you for tuning in. This is Amber on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Amber. I mean, I mean, hey, Tom. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, I was wondering, are you hiring by any chance? I listen to your show every day after work, and I love it, and I just think it would be so far to work at. What do you propose to do for me? Hmm, well, right now I work at a law firm. I'm a file clerk and receptionist. Yes. You, you, you. So you imagine that we have a big office here with like a reception desk and. No. Could I? What about answering phones? 
Oh, uh, that would mean we'd have to take the guinea out and have to put you in instead. Oh. Uh, so is that a no? Well, we, we just don't have that many positions here. That's I mean, cool. most women, there's only one position I can think of. Oh. They'd be working under me. <laughs> nah. But hey, can I ask for one favor? What's that? Can you let me go with one of those bong heads, please? Well, I certainly can. Seriously, if Amber would like to be on my staff, I'd be happy to have her work under me. Yes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. By the way, ladies, if any of you would like to work on my staff, just uh, give us a call here. Trust me, I've got quite the staff. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Uh, this is um, Brandon. Let's go to Brandon on the Tom Like Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Hello, son. Hey, I have a question. I actually, well, actually, it's kind of. I called you a long time ago, about three or four years ago, and um, I was currently file clerk and pretty much going nowhere. And uh, you told me to uh, go sit on a cliff and uh, figure out what I want to do in life. Yeah. So I did that, and I came up with uh, web design, and I have been, uh, you know, focusing and programming with uh, databases and stuff like that. And I've been starting to excel pretty well in it, but I just wanted to get your secondary guidance on uh, what what my next step should be. All right. Uh, are you making good money? Um, right now I'm only working part time, um, and I'm making, I guess, decent money. Um, I understand I could be making a, a, you know, a good amount of money, and um, I'm, you know, trying to work my way into full time at this uh, new job that I got. In the but, meantime, uh, maybe you want to work a second, uh, a second job doing the same thing for somebody else. I was thinking about it, but I also been uh, using this time because uh, actually my mom had bought me a condo. I kind of lucked out on, and uh, she's been helping me with the uh, rent, you know, renting it out for now. And uh, I've been kind of taking this time to study and uh, make sure I excel at my what I do. Okay. Well, uh, I certainly think that you shouldn't get too comfortable at any job in that business. Uh, you know, anything having to do with computers, uh, whether it be hardware or software, uh, whether it be uh, web design, or whether it be uh, writing code or whatever, uh, it's a very fluid business. This is not the kind of business where you get a job and you, you stay there for 40 years and get a gold watch. Mm -hmm. So you constantly have to be looking for your next opportunity. And that could mean, um, you know, uh, at least sending out resumes or showing your work to others. Making sure they're aware of what you're doing. I would also recommend that if there, and I'm sure there are trade shows or conventions having to do with what you do, that you go there with a stack of business cards. And make sure mm -hmm. people are aware of your existence. I also recommend you post your resume in places like Monster.com and other websites, CareerBuilder.com. Yeah, I did that, and that's how I got the position I'm yeah. at now. Well, and uh, I had a pretty decent resume going. I mean, I've done a ton of projects, and uh, this well, company's uh, pretty much a bigger step than what I was before. Keep your resume updated with all the latest stuff you've been doing. Make sure that all those websites have been updated. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's you know it's a lot of work, and you have to constantly be you know the care and feeding of your career. It's it's a daily thing. I I know that from my own career. Uh, uh, for years, I went to all the broadcasting conventions. I shook a lot of hands. I drank a lot of martinis with complete strangers, uh, trying to make sure people knew what I did for a living and about my availability. Uh -huh. And years of that paid off for sure. Because uh, another thing I've been, you know, pretty much learning on my own, I've taken several classes doing what I do and, you know, just the community college classes, but do you recommend me going to school? And I think uh, when you're talking about the computer field, 
Uh, as much education as you can get is a good thing. Um, they figure out the areas where you need brushing up or you need more uh, information or more skills and get that done. Uh, uh, trust me, when you're talking about companies like Google or Yahoo, uh, Apple, uh, Pixar, these are all big companies uh, that in one way or another revolve around the field you're in. Um, they're always looking for what they call the brightest people on earth. And that means you're competing against people who have lots and lots of education. So my recommendation to you is that you get as much education as you could stand to take. Mm -hmm. So you think I should just get in there and, I mean, do you think I should go to community college or try and work in my way into an actual college? Well, I think an actual college is ultimately the best goal, especially if you're only working part-time. Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea. It takes work and, yes, perseverance, but do you want to be, you know, a part-time guy? Do you want to be the best? Yeah, I definitely want to be the best. Well, that's going to take more work than you're putting in now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I've, you know, I slave all night sometimes. You know, I'll be up till 6 o'clock in the morning, you know, really trying to improve what I do. And, um... I mean, I've seen a big improvement because of it. Right. And um, actually, to be honest, uh, I don't think my mom's been ever so happy that I've actually pursued something like this. And, you know, it's it kind of took you waking me up to go and do what I did. Mom, I, I, I've done many shows where I've talked about the fact that the people who say they love you the most, unfortunately, and it's kind of sad, many times they're the ones who try to kill your dream. Because they're afraid you won't be around for them anymore when you become successful. You know that line people use, you know, will you remember the little people when you've made it? You know, people really do feel that way. And uh, they, they think you're abandoning them. Or they think you won't be around anymore once you have, are successful or you've got money. Mm -hmm. And they will do little things to try to inhibit your growth. And so in order to succeed, you have to stop worrying about what like your parents and your friends think of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's the only way to be successful because it's what I had to do. Unfortunately, there are still members of my family who still to this day uh, don't understand it, don't accept it, and are angry at me for one reason or another. But I had to just do what I had to do, and that means I had to move thousands of miles from my family and friends. I had to work my ass off. Many times I couldn't be there for people's birthdays or their weddings or their anniversaries because I was in another state doing a radio show. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't do those things, I wouldn't be talking to you here now. <laughs> so it's really something you have to think about. It's something you have to consider doing. And that is you have to consider saying, Mom, I love you very much, but this is what I'm doing. And in fact, I'm going to do more of it. Yeah, I mean, she's really proud that of what I'm doing. I mean, it's. That's not a problem at all. So. Good. Well, that's good. But uh, she may see less of you as you spend more and more time uh, going to school, taking uh, courses, <laughs> working on your craft. I signed off on that a long time ago. She's. Uh, I moved uh, from Northern California to Southern California. Good for you. So, um, you know, a lot more going on down here for sure. Well... I'm I'm very glad to hear that you're making progress, Brandon. I think you're going in the right direction. You're asking the right questions. Uh, you know, I talk to all these morons who call and say, I'm thinking about going back to school or I'm thinking about trying a new career. You actually, after we talked, you actually went out and did something. And, and yeah, I'm proud of you for that. And, and now you're seeing, now you're starting to see the benefits of working hard and having a plan. Mm-hmm. And you need to keep taking it up another notch. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny because the, the day after I talked to you, I went straight to the bookstore and, you know, looked you know, on the shelves looking for careers and what to do. And for some reason that popped out to me. So, And, and you see the benefit of spending time alone and thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, people give me a hard time about the fact that I live alone or that I like to spend some time alone. You know, I just bought a new house with 20 acres of nothing, just a big ranch uh, where I spend weekends and holidays and whatever. And uh, sometimes I spend there just thinking. I sit there just just pondering. Yeah, I grew up as an only child, so 
I, you know, I like my alone space. So good for you. So you yeah. need you need to remember to take that time sometimes, and mm -hmm. and when you're not sure what to do next, um, give yourself a day where you sit down with a yellow pad or a you know something to record your voice. Sit down and talk about or write about the things that are important to you, mm -hmm. and then make them happen. Mm -hmm. This is a country where any dream can come true. I really believe it. Yeah, I do too. I see them driving down the street every day. Yeah, you're talking to me right now. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> I grew up in the poorest neighborhood in America. I had nothing. We had no contacts. I didn't have a silver spoon in my mouth. My family was poor. I know where you're coming from. I, I didn't get to see most of it, but I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Congratulations, Brandon. You're on your way. Thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Likes Show.